We've already discussed one way of making a generator, but it's not practical. You had to change the area of a loop and you had to continue doing so. I guess that would take a really big warehouse. What if instead you have a loop and you simply spin it around in a magnetic field? No uh, current through the loop or anything. I mean, when you begin, no current through the loop. You'll be inducing a current, of course. But I'm just planning to spin this sucker and see the fact that the flux through it is changing. Nature's going to hate that. So I have to actually, I have to, well, there's a torque on it once it gets going. And it doesn't want to keep going. But I'm planning to keep it going. So I'm inputting mechanical energy. And I can get out electrical energy. You could do something like, I don't know, burn wood or coal. And then have steam expand to turn this. Uh, or you could also... Have have some radioactive material that you've isolated and have it boil water. Boy, that's pretty high tech for low tech, right? But then the, the water turns to steam and expands and you cause that to turn a fan, a, a, I don't know, a turbine or something, and it's spinning this sucker around as a result. But anyway, no matter how you get the mechanical energy, what you'd want to do and this is a very practical way to get electricity into the electrical form, is to spin a loop around in a magnetic field. So let's first agree that right now, if I'm talking about the flux through this loop, it's going to be the magnetic field dotted into the area, which is the magnetic field quantity uh, and the area quantity times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the area. Please remember that the area vector is pointing out from the area. So right now, in this orientation, theta is equal to 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is zero. So we don't have any flux in this orientation. But if I rotate like this, I've gotten maximum flux. Flux. If I rotate like this, I've gotten minimum flux. But this is zero. This is big flux. It's just B times A. This is zero. This is negative B times A. Now, to tell negative b times a apart from b times a, you have to at least decide a starting point, And that's a technicality. But I want to set up this equation. And I want to kind of figure out what's happening if I'm changing the direction of the loop as a function of time. You know that uh, if we're changing it as a function of time, theta is equal to omega times time, where omega is the rotational rate. It's the angular speed of my spinny aroundy game. So let's get ourselves the equation then for the magnetic flux. It's going to be the magnetic field in which our loop finds itself times the area of that loop times the cosine of omega times time. And I guess we can control our omega by how hard, how fast we decide to spin this sucker. And you know already, let's go, let's switch colors. I'm getting bored of purple. Uh, you know already that we can induce, we can induce a voltage by saying negative N times D phi dt. And this, strictly speaking, requires a, a very careful application of the derivative because we've got negative n times all the derivative of all this stuff, b a cosine omega t. You really want to know which of these is changing. Let's assume, let's assume b and a will be held constant. That will make our job a little bit easier. In that case, we can conclude that V induced is, well, I'm just going to get the derivative of cosine omega t. I get a chain rule, though, because I'll take the derivative of the cosine and get myself a negative sign. And then I'll also take the derivative of omega t, and I'll get an omega out front. So watch what happens here. I get negative n times b times a times negative sine of omega t times omega. Ah, now this is a really beautiful thing. We simplify that and we get the nba, awesome, times omega times the sine of omega t. Now, this tells me that we can get a, well, we can get an induced voltage. And if we ran that voltage through a resistor, we would find that the power through our resistor would be V squared divided by the resistance of our resistor. In fact, the power that we're getting out of this sucker would be N squared times B squared times A squared times omega squared times sine squared of omega T. 
divided by the resistance of our resistor. Have you ever seen the NBA squared? It's right there. They're used to playing with spheres, but that is a square MBA. And notice also that the power depends very heavily on how fast we're spinning that sucker. So you want to spin it rather fast, but the faster you spin it, I would bet, the faster you have to input energy to it also. Because remember, this isn't giving us energy. This is simply taking mechanical energy and converting it into electrical energy. But that's a very, very useful proposition because electrical energy is really easy to get from one place to another with very little overhead. We'll have a calculation on that in class too. So here we are with generators. Faster you spin it, the more energy comes out in every unit of time.